Welcome to Studio Time. And in this next episode, I'm going to talk to you about a theme that I'm very, very happy with. And there's a lot of explaining to do for this uh, video. So this would be a relatively long video and it will go into harmony a little bit more and also into counterpoint writing for strings. So I'm just going to warn you, this is somewhat of a longer episode. Um, so the theme we're talking about is Cyborg's theme and this plays uh, uh, in one go extremely long in the movie. It's almost 14 minutes. Let me see if I say this right. Um, yeah, 13 minutes and 25 seconds. So it's a really long piece that keeps building and building, becomes small again and starts building again. And it's primarily focused around strings and a few electronic sounds and a piano sound. So before I really go into this piece of music, um, I want to play this thing. Uh, and like I said, it's going to be a long episode. So I do want to play you at least until I get to the first section where the music becomes small again. And that is already, um, yeah, eight and a half minutes. <laughs> okay, here we go. I might actually walk away here and now and then to grab uh, some water, uh, but obviously I will be back. Here we go. Let's play it.
Okay, let's stop here for a second. Uh, so this is the first time that theme just builds up to some sort of a peak and then it drops down and then it starts again. So I would like to analyze a little bit um, what, what's going on here. So if you will, the very first melody that is being played <coughs> is the cello line. So let's just see what happens here. So I'm just going to solo just this part and we'll see the notes here. It's a slow moving note progression, but it's still a melody, but a slow one. That's where the melody starts again. See, you, from this point forward, you see that this thing is being repeated. So, um, and then that starts again, and then that starts again. So the first line that is added to this is, uh, I'll open up these parts, um, which is this thing, which is the, the, the second violin is playing the C, and the B, the C and the B, and C and the B. And as you can see it, it's playing it in the same cadence all the way through. So it creates or tension while it's going to the B, or it's creating a release. And so on various different chords uh, or notes, because now two melodies are playing at the same time with the viola in between who is filling uh, the harmony out, um, so now we have a harmony because we have three uh, voices playing at the same time. So if we play it from the point where uh, the second violin comes in, so let's see what happens. This is nice and consonant. This too. Tension. Release. Tension. Release. So what's interesting here is that uh, here the B is tension and here the B is release. So let's uh, play it from here. Consonant. Tension. Also a little bit of tension. Consonant. Consonant. Tension. Consonant, somewhat tense, release, consonant, consonant, release, uh, tension, a sus4, so it's a little bit of tension, release. And from this point forward, um, the cello starts repeating what it already played, and a second melody is now uh, is now added. That is a real melody. The section before only happens once on the on the opening, and then it doesn't come back until it starts again. Uh, so this is what I want to focus on right now. Uh, so uh, I'm going to open up all the string parts at the same time, um, and now we focus on that second melody that comes in. 
uh, which is being played here. I'm gonna get rid of this and let's see where we can clearly see that melody. Um, so this is the one, the second, the second violin. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. So that's the melody you want to follow. So uh, let me make this darker. Um, ooh, this takes a little bit of time, guys. Um, Okay, so there we go, from there to there. Uh, and then something else happens. So what we also see right now is that the melody that was played by the celli in the beginning, uh, they repeat, but now the basses are gonna be added an octave lower. And later on here in this theme, you see that the, um, uh, the celli, when the celli is like building down uh, the, the basses are going an octave even below that and now a secondary, this one desk of celli is being added an octave higher of the bass. So now we have the bottom three octaves are really playing that line pretty forcefully while the rest of the music is developing here. So let's play from here where that second melody comes in of which I made the notes darker. So here, at bar two, uh, 119, um, this line stops that we just talked about. Da, da, da. So that one went all the way to here. And now the um, second violins are playing their own harmony part up there, which is not necessarily counterpoint melodic writing. It's, it's just harmony at that point. Uh, and the basses and the celli are starting over. But two things are happening now. The first celli, together with the viola, are starting to play melody number three. And the melody that we just focused on, played by the second violins, is now played by the first violins an octave higher. So here we go. So I changed a few small notes uh, to make it work with the second harmony, but this is a shape of that melody. So follow that. And here we have, uh, this is the viola. Let's see if I go to the celli. Here we go. This is the third melody now being introduced. And when we get to this part, it plays in octaves together with the first violins, the continuation of the first violin melody, but doubled an octave below. So um, I'm going to make that darker so you can see it a little better. And now I'm going to play this section. So let me back up a little bit. So you hear the finishing of the second violins playing melody number two uh, against it. And then melody number two is now played by the first violins an octave higher and a third melody is being introduced played on the first celli and the viola.
I'm going to stop here again. So now we're going into the last cycle and now no new melodies are being, uh, being introduced, but melodies are reshuffled between the different instruments. So now the celli is going to play melody number two. Da, 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 da. So this melody right here, which was first played on the second violins as a second melody. And what we just heard, the theme that's right here uh, from the celli playing together with the violas is now being played here. You see that? The first violins are now playing it an octave higher than the celli did. So let me back up a little bit where we hear the finishing of that theme on the celli and then it goes to the violins an octave higher. Do I say that correct? Uh, yes, it's an octave higher. And now what the violins used to play is now being played by the celli. So uh, the idea being is that you have three melodies, but you pass the melodies around in different octaves to different instruments. And you get a really nice build and a really nice color by these melodies being shifted. And the focus every time is on one of these melodies, depending who's the most predominant. Um, but you get a really interesting vibe <clears throat> when you listen to that in one go. So let me just play that. As you can see, when we get to that section, very similar how that previous section ended, uh, the celli and the violins and the viola in the section before finished that melody playing an octaves together. And the same thing is, happen, is happening right there where uh, I just uh, stopped. And then we get to the break of this piece and then the piece starts again. But now in this section, and we have to restart a, cam a camera, but when we come back, uh, it now the melodies are thrown around even differently into the different instruments groups. But we're going to come back in a second. Hey guys, sorry about that. We're back. We just had to uh, swap out a memory card. Um, so, when the theme starts again, the themes are reshuffled again in a way that we haven't heard before. So. Uh, let's look at this. So if we look at the first violin here, which is blue, um, and the way that it develops, you might recognize it, that used to be the cello and the bass. And when we look at this theme, which is theme number two introduced, used to be played by the second violins. So again, what used to be the bottom cello and the bass is now being played by the first violin. What used to be played by the second violin is now played by the cello. Okay, so let's see how that plays. And when things start to change, I'm gonna stop. So here, 
in the viola app, something new gets introduced that will also come back later. Uh, I forgot to tell you um, that the melodic rhythm here is the same, but I did change quite some notes and I kept the D and the E flat or D sharp um, on the same spot. But since we're in C minor, you should say E flat. Um, and um, from this point on, this da -da -da, uh, gets introduced. And so uh, my singing is horrible, as you guys might have remembered from the previous studio times. Uh, so uh, we're just gonna continue and then So even though the notes again here are different, but the melodic rhythm we've already seen, uh, which is played by the cello for the first time and the viola. Da -da -dum, ba -da -dum. So it, the melodic rhythm is the same, but the notes are slightly different. And so that is this section here. When we get to this section, the next section, then we hear something that is 100% the same, and that is the ending of the melody that used to be played by here. Here we see it, by the first violins. So, uh, let's play that. So what do we what do we hear here? So here now the basses and the cellis in octaves are going to play what used to be played here. G C D. So basically it's this section here. So what the cello used to play together with the vi uh, viola is now being played by the basses of the lower octave. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, so what happens here is there is a little bit of noodling around here that has the same melodic rhythm as some of the things that we've heard before. And at the same time, the basses are now back at their very last uh, phrases of what they used to play uh, before in the section. But this is all quite altered to, to basically come to bar 193. So when you work to picture sometimes, um, even though this piece is more playing like music throughout the scene and it hits certain things, but it's more to emphasize a feeling. Actually at bar 193, I had to hit something in the picture. So these bars here uh, in total eight are basically uh, playing something that will get me to the point where I actually need to hit something. So the musical DNA, when I play it, it's all like, oh, that feels really like the same piece. It's not like we're going to a different radio station and a bar 193, we're back. Um, but it's all very loose interpretation of things that I've done before. before. But the melodic rhythm, at least, is very similar to what we've, used, uh, what we've heard before. And therefore, it, uh, it creates extra familiarity.
So now we get to the grand finale of this piece. And I'm going to play this while I'm going to zoom in as much as I can uh, so you guys can actually look at many notes as possible. Uh, let's see if I need, oh, I can still go a little further. Let's see, like that. So uh, I'm gonna pick it up a little earlier and I'm gonna play this thing till the end and I'm now taking it off solo so you hear it a little bit in context with a few sound design elements that are added to it and that pulsating piano that I will explain a little bit about when we're done playing. Um, because that happens also through the whole piece and some of the holes that you've seen in the harmony in the strings where you're like, hey, there's a gap in the strings, why? Again, like I have been explaining in some of the other studio times, if you do a hybrid score, you have to create room for the other instruments. Otherwise, it's going to be too much and it's going to be too mushy. So I am actually now going to play the other elements that go with it. Um, and I'm keeping this window open and you can now see where you hear melody number one, where, for instance, it starts with melody number one right here in the cello. Here we see melody number two being played in the second violins. Here we see melody number two going now into the violas and uh, the second violins, a, a few extra desks. Um, and here we see melody number three being played on the cello with a few violas. And from that point on, everything gets like tossed around uh, until we reach the grand finale. So have a listen. Let's see, I just want to make sure we see all the strings. Boom, here we go. Ah, here we are. Boom, I'm going to back up a little bit. Yes, I already did that for you guys. Here we go. There you have it. So you could see how these different melodies are being thrown around in the different areas uh, of the octaves 
to the different types of instruments. So the only thing that rests me to say now is that uh, that was my demo. Uh, you know, I always like to show you demos, like what I show the director, what I hear the director, uh, and not the finished uh, products with the live strings. You can hear that on the um, uh, on the soundtrack. It is. Uh, it sounded absolutely so incredibly beautiful with. Uh, the live string players in London, they did such an incredible job. And uh, especially here, um, it makes uh, the live playing so special uh, when, you know, it's played with real performance. You know, samples only can take you so far uh, when it comes to that. Let's talk a little bit about um, the electronic elements here. Um, so I actually recorded this in um, because uh, I had some performance issue with this plugin, uh, and the plugin is called Portal, and it's made by Output. Uh, I'm just gonna open it for you really quick. Um, here we go. Oh, it's not on this rig. Well, guess what? Okay, uh, it's on my rig at home, uh, where I actually did the score. Um, but okay, check it out. It's called um, Portal, made by a company called Output. It's, um, it does granular synthesis uh, and it creates incredible effects. Um, so uh, to play you what it can do, um, we hear a simple piano melody with just that plug-in on it uh, and hear what it does. It's incredible. I mean, come on, is that amazing or what? Um, so this is just a piano with a plugin on it. It's so, you couldn't get quicker sound design with that plugin. And so it's really great. Um, so here's another uh, piano resample. Um, I think it also had Portal on it. Yeah. I mean, how easy is that? And then I had another really awesome plugin on top of it, which is uh, this one, the Black Hole. This is made by Eventide. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So if you have something like a Black Hole, you have something like a, a Fab Filter, the Proverb, if you have something like Valhalla Reverb, if you have something like Output uh, Portal, you are king when it comes to sound design. You can do such great things uh, with, with, with re reverb and creating insane spaces and stuff like that. So guys who are not so familiar with sound design, please have a look at these plugins. And um, there are some free versions available on their websites, like without saving or without this and that. So you could really test them out. It, it's incredible. Um, so that is a thing that um, runs through this arrangement. The other thing that I really would like to point out is that consistent pulse that runs through this thing. Uh, that is a combination of a harp and a ticking sound coming from the Omnisphere. Uh, so let's play that. And it's an interesting harmony. So this thing never changed. Um, so it's basically, if I select the harp, so it's the D and then, so G, D with the E flat, while the bass does But this thing keeps playing. Even if I change the harmony into the, in, in the strings and such, 
And it constantly creates this really interesting dissonant effect that we hear a lot with minimal music um, from Steve Reich, John Adams, Philip Glass. They are the masters at it. And actually, if you will, um, the whole piece is technically minimal music because it's a few melodies uh, with uh, a distinctive repetition that constantly get repeated, even though they happen in different octaves or in different ranges. And the result of it uh, has a very Bach-like adagio quality to it. And um, Bach was obviously the master of fugue. I don't even know where to begin with the fugue because it's so complicated to do it right. And for people that have studied uh, writing for fugue, um, it's a complicated thing. And even if you have to write one in your whole study and to get that perfect, well, Bach was writing a few a day and they were absolutely perfect, all of them. Um, so whoever uh, studied uh, the piano works for the well-tempered clavier, uh, y you will know how brilliant this guy wrote his, uh, his pieces. So um, it has a lot of that type of uh, quality. And a few other sounds that are in there, and I just use them for a tone, uh, is um, a sampled guitar. It, it's one of my Fender, Fender guitars that I sampled, and then I granalized it to... It still has the character of a guitar, but it, it sounds really long in nature. So that is like a quick harmonic reduction uh, that I just played of this piece. Other things that you find in this is uh, a bass guitar that I sampled. There's actually four bass guitars. There's a distortion bass guitar in each speaker. Uh, and it's, it's doubling the bass and it sounds very soft in nature if you play it soft. to give it like a little bit of darker color, but if you play it loud. <clears throat> so it's, it's my bass guitar that I sampled with my um, uh, bass amp. Um, and the rest is just like a few low booms here and there. And there's a, one more sound that we need to focus on, which is also a guitar, uh, which I sampled. Uh, and it's called, uh, it's in the series, ah, obviously we can, can we see the instruments? Ah, ah. let me do this, now you can see it. Um, so there you see all my guitar pedals um, on the floor um, that I used uh, creating all these uh, guitar instruments and uh, I recorded note by note and then uh, created this instruments uh, of this. So this instrument is very interesting because it, it has a So yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is a guitar. And uh, that was sampled on that uh, Fender box. And I think I've showed you this one on a different video. Here we go. It's the Princeton 64 reverb. It's really great with a bunch of effects. And with that, I was able to get this sound. And um, if I open it together with the bass, uh, let's see where it starts playing or here it starts playing. So um, you could, I'm just playing it together with the bass just a bass guitar, uh, so you can hear what it does.
anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so it just alternates between the C and the B uh, in a somewhat regular fashion. Uh, and uh, it adds another really interesting color together um, with, um, um, so if I switch the bass off for now, uh, together with the harp that does that plucky thing with that Omnisphere bell. Uh, so it's an, it's an interesting color altogether. So ladies and gentlemen, friends, uh, those are all the elements of Cyborg's uh, story. Uh, and I explained to you a little bit how this was all put together, uh, the sound design sounds, but primarily focusing on the various different uh, melody uh, lines and how they're distributed throughout the strings, throughout this whole piece of music. I hope you liked this episode uh, and I'll see you next week.